and I will be sharing with you the word of God. So may the Lord bless you and be with you is my prayer. Thank you for those that are tuned in, our loyal listeners, but also for those of you that tuned in for the first time. I would like to welcome you here in the program and the platform on the Radio Easter River. And may the Lord just bless you and be with you wherever in the world you are is my prayer. And we thank the Lord for giving us yet another opportunity, another privilege that we can just interact with one another and that we can hear from God's holy word. So may God bless you. And I would like to greet you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I trust you enjoy the beautiful song we just listened to speaking about Hallowed Be Thy Holy Name. And this is a song that we have heard and also a prayer that we have heard since childhood. And we were taught this from uh, the laps of our mothers or from our kindergarten teachers. We heard about this prayer, Hallowed Be Thy Holy Name. And it is such an important prayer because it comes from the Lord himself teaching his disciples how to pray. And the Bible even speaks about it in the book of Romans chapter 8, that when we do not know how to pray or what to pray, the Spirit of God himself intercedes on our behalf and it gives us the utterance on what to pray, on what to speak. Jesus even says with regards to preaching, he spoke to his disciples in Luke chapter 10 and even Matthew chapter 10. He says that they should take no thought of what they will say, but the Holy Spirit itself will give them the words to say in that hour. So may the Lord bless you and be with you. And we are totally dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ, on what he wants us to do and how he wants us to do it. So I trust that the Lord will just intercede on our behalf and that the Lord will be with us. Now, if you have your Bibles ready, you can turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. Matthew, chapter 6, and from verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall we reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Now, I would like to pull from the 11th verse where Jesus says, Give us this day our daily bread. And we would like to speak tonight about our daily bread. And when we refer to our daily bread, we are not just referring to the natural substance of bread. Now, we know that all of us eat bread. And bread is a, a life-sustaining substance. And it is something that we have need of on a daily basis for our survival. Now, the outside man loves of bread, but the inside man loves also of bread, but of the bread of the word of God. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, and also Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3, Jesus says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Hallelujah. So the outside man loves of bread, but the inside man loves of the word. Now the word of God itself is bread. It is bread to the soul of the human being. And Jesus made this very plain in his temptation to Satan. As uh, Satan came to tempt him and tell, told him to, 
turn the stones into bread if you be the son of God. And Jesus rebuked him with the word. Now the word itself is the spiritual substance by which a believer lives. The word itself is the guideline. The word itself gives the direction. Without the word, you cannot live. It is by the word of God that we live. And the Bible even speaks about it in Galatians chapter 3. That the person that does these things shall live by them. The word of God is really what gives life to a believer. The word of God is that which causes a believer to live. And there is no true believer dwelling the earth today that cannot live without the word of God. The word of God tells us how to live. The word of God gives us the instructions. Somebody once said that the word Bible is an acronym that stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. And that is exactly what the Bible is. It is basic instructions that God gives us to live by before we leave the earth. The Bible gives us advice on every single topic that there is to know about in this life. God gives us instructions on how to conduct ourselves when it comes to marriage, when it comes to family life, when it comes to our daily lives, God gives us instruction on how we should live. And if we follow the guidelines that God gives us, we will find the true source of happiness. Because God's word is given for a purpose. God's reason is given for, God's word is given for a reason. And God wants to guide his people. God wants to lead his people. Just as a father leads his children, so God leads his children. Because in the natural, we find a type of the spiritual. So just as it is in the natural, the Bible says in Psalm 103, that as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pities them that fear him. Hallelujah. The Lord has pity. And the Lord has understanding. Now, those of you that are listening that are parents, you know that when you look at your child, there is always sympathy. There is always empathy. There is always, when you look at your child, many times a child resembles the, the, the parent. And when you look at the child, you look at the reflection of yourself. And the same it is when God looks at us. Because we are made in his reflection. We are made in his image. The Bible says in Genesis 1 from verse 27 to verse 29 that God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he them. And when God looks at you, he looks at his own image. The image in which he created you. And he looks with sympathy and he looks with love. And God loves you so much. The Bible says in John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that is really how God looks at you. Now any parent wants the best for his or her child. Any parent wants just the absolute best that he can give or get for his or her child. Now how much more the heavenly father God wants the best for us. And therefore, God gives us his word. God gives us guidelines on how to live. And many times, people make the wrong choices. Choices that are contrary to the word of God. And then they find themselves in unhappiness. And then they find themselves in difficult, awkward situations. Because they bypass the word of God. Because they bypass the instructions of the Bible. And they choose to not live by the word, not to live by the daily bread. And people find themselves many times even in trouble. And they find themselves in situations where life becomes unpleasant because people ignore the instructions and the guidelines of the Bible. Now, the Bible is our daily bread. We need to live by the Bible. We need to live by the instructions of the Bible. Now, God is not a dictator that just wants to give people orders and then sit back and see them going into a, a life that is filled with heartache. But God, as a loving father, gives instruction to us as his children because he is looking at our best interests. God wants to give you the best that he can. 
And when we look, for instance, at the commandments of God, what God laid down was for the best interest of both man and God. We go to Exodus chapter 20. We see God giving instructions on to his people and telling them how they should live. And we see when God says, for instance, that we should not steal, we see that God really looks at the best interest of his people because he knows the damage and the unhappiness it causes when belongings are taken from one person. When God, for instance, say that thou shalt not murder, God looks at the best interest because God really cherishes life and life originates from God. And God says thou shalt not murder. God looks at the best interest of his creation because God knows the unhappiness, the pain, the heartache that comes with murder. And the Bible speaks about murder even that it comes from the devil and that he is a murderer from the beginning and that he is a father of lies. He's the father of lies. So we see that God gives a reason. When God says that thou shalt not commit adultery, God knows the unhappiness that can come about. Now, adultery is defined in the Bible as an act, an immoral act. And this is when a woman that is married to another man goes into an intimate relationship with a man that she's not married to. And God knows the unhappiness that this causes. God knows the chaos that this can cause. And therefore, God lays down a rule like that to keep the happiness, to keep the happiness in the family, to keep the happiness between the man and the woman. And so we can continue and we can go into detail every command that God says, every word that God says. God says it for a reason, and God has your best interest at heart. And that's why God gives you his word to live by. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When God says that children should obey their parents, then God even gives it with a promise. The Bible says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be prolonged upon the earth, that you may have a long life upon the earth. God has the best interest even of children at heart. And we know that God loves the children. We see this in Mark chapter 10. We see this in Matthew chapter 10. How did the disciples were trying to hinder the children but to come unto Jesus? But then Jesus said that they should not hinder the children, but let the children come unto him. God has the best interest of children at heart even. God does not want children to be neglected. God does not want children to be abused. God does not want children to wind up using alcohol and drugs and destroying their lives but God wants the best interest for children, and God gives a simple instruction. God tells children to obey their parents. Now, if a child can obey his parent, whom he has seen with his physical eyes, then such a child can also obey God, whom he has not seen with his physical eyes. And so it is important for children to obey and to respect their parents, especially their fathers and their mothers, to respect them, to obey them. And if they honor their fathers and their mothers, God will also honor them with a long life. God will bless them with a long life upon the face of the earth if children live by this word of God. It is so important that we live by the word of God. Not live by the word of a man, but live by the word of God. You see, because the word itself is God. The Bible says in John 1, in verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then the Word became flesh, and He dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory as of the only begotten that came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And the Word itself is God. And Jesus speaks about Himself in John chapter 6, where He speaks about Him not just as being the Word, but actually speaking about himself as being the bread that came down from heaven. And this is the bread that we should eat from, the daily bread, which is the word. We read in John 6, verse 32. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth light unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I say unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I am came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. For this is the Father's will which have sent me, that all that of all which he have given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourself. No man can come to me except the Father which have sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Hallelujah. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man therefore that have heard and have learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man have seen the Father, says, Save ye which is of God, ye have seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give him is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we clearly see it. What is the daily bread? It is not just the natural substance, the natural bread that we buy somewhere at the supermarket and eat. That bread is important, yes, for the outward man. But the inward man shall live of the daily bread of the word of God. The inward man, the soul, the spirit, the innermost being. That being loves of Jesus Christ. He loves of the word. And those that are believers in Jesus Christ, they live by Jesus Christ. Outside of Jesus Christ, there is no life. Outside of Jesus Christ, there is no everlasting life. The Bible says in 1 John 5, verse 10, 11, and 12, that this is the record that God has given us eternal life. And this eternal life is in His Son. He that has the Son of God has eternal life. He that does not have the Son of God does not have eternal life. Now that is how it is, beloved. We're going to take a break now. We're going to listen to that beautiful song again, speaking about Hallowed Be Thy Holy Name by Jimmy Swaggart. And may the Lord bless you. We will return shortly and continue the study in the Word. God bless you. Our station, our talent, our people.
What a lovely thought indeed When my spirit is in need And I know not exactly how to pray When I fall down on my knees The Holy Spirit intervenes At the mention of that love is the name Hallowed be thy holy name Hallowed be thy holy name Jesu Christ, our Jesus Christ Yahweh Shiloh El Shaddai Hallowed be thy holy name Pray thy kingdom come let your perfect will be done on earth today, just the way you plan. As we feed on daily bread, we'll keep moving up ahead and be singing praises to the great I am. Hallowed be thy holy. Hallowed be thy holy name. Jesu Christ, our Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shiloh El Shaddai. Hallowed be thy holy name. Hallowed be thy holy name. Hallowed be thy holy name. Jesus Christ, our Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shiloh El Shaddai, hallowed be thy holy name. Jesus Christ, our Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shiloh El Shaddai, hallowed be thy holy name. Jesus Christ, our Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shiloh El Shaddai, hallowed be thy holy name. Hallowed be thy holy name. Yes, our station, our talent, our people. God bless you beloved and welcome back to the program a study in the word so we're talking tonight about the daily bread which Jesus taught us to pray to the father that he should give us this day our daily bread and from different bible verses we can see that the daily bread does not just refer to the natural substance of bread which we all live by from day to day and that bread is meant for the outside man which is the flesh but the inside man, which is the soul and the spirit, that man lives of the bread of the word of God. As it is written in Matthew 4 verse 4 and Deuteronomy 8 verse 3, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the word of God is bread to the believer. And the believer needs to eat of the bread of the word of God if they want to live forever. Now Jesus refers to himself as the bread of life, as the bread that came down from heaven. So if we eat of that bread, then we shall live forever. And it's so important, beloved, that we eat of the bread and that we do not eat any other strange substance. You know, it's so important when it comes to diet, what we eat, because it can have an effect on our health, not just in the short term, but also in the long run. And any dietitian or doctor or medical expert can confirm this, that what we eat has an effect on the natural, on the body. Now, how much more in the spiritual? We must be careful what we allow inside of our souls, what we feed our souls. And the best nutrition to feed the soul with is the Word of God. The Word of God is like a light. It is a light unto our paths and a lamp unto our feet. The Word of God is what guides us 
Now we are loving, as I have repeated numerous times on this radio station, that we are living in what is called the period of the last days. And this is not my view, my teaching, or my opinion, but it comes from the Word of God. And we have referenced over and over so many scriptures that points to us living in the last days. Now, there is a promise made for the last days, and God says there will come a famine. And we know what a famine is. It is a shortage of food or a lack of food. And we read about it in Amos chapter 8 and verse 11, where the Bible says there's coming a day where God will send a famine, a famine into the land. Amos 8 and verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst, they that swear by the sin of Samaria, and say, Thy God, O Dan, liveth, and the manner of Beersheba liveth, even they shall fall and never rise up again. So God says there's coming a famine, and we are living in the days of the famine. And a famine refers also to a scarcity of something. So God says there will be a famine, not a famine for bread or thirst for water, but a famine to hear the word of God. And so we see in the day that we live in that the true, of, true word of God has become a scarcity. Everyone is referring to the Bible, but the Bible is being falsified and fabricated. The gospel is being turned into a cotton candy social salvation message. But when we go back to the Holy Scripture, we will see the true word of God. When we go back to what is written. Now Jesus told Satan it is written. And we should go back to what is written. What is written in the word of God. Anyone can come forward and present a view or a teaching. But it should be compared with what is already written. Is it written in the word? Satan came to Jesus and he told Jesus that it is written that he shall send his angels to take charge over thee so that you don't dash your foot against a stone. But then Jesus told him it is also written and we should compare what is being preached to what is written. Is it written? Is it already written in the scripture? Because only that which is written in the scripture is that which God recognizes and which God respects as his word. Anything contrary, anything that does not agree with what is already written, such a teaching or such a preaching should be cast out because it is not part of the food of God. It is not part of the table of God. And we are living in the days where there is a scarcity of the true word of God. People are running to and fro. People are looking for the truth. And if you are looking for the truth, that is good if you are a truth seeker. But you will not find the truth unless you go back to the scriptures. The Bible says in John 17, verse 17, Sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is the truth. The word of God is the truth. We see in John 18, verse 37, Pontius Pilate asking, posing the question to our Lord Jesus Christ and asking him, what is truth? And truth can only be found in the scriptures. Truth can only be found in what is already written in the word of God. And the Bible speaks about a famine. And we are living in the days of that famine. The Bible even speaks about it. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, that there will come a time in the last days where people will have itchy ears. They will turn their ears from the truth. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, or let's rather start verse 2. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn 
away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. And this is the condition that the world and the church finds themselves in today, particularly the church, that people are having itching ears and they are turning their ears away from the truth. And they want to listen to fables. They want to listen to fabrications. They want to listen to lies. They want to listen to things that are not the word of God. And that is why this day that we are living in is classified as the day or the days which God spoke of that he would send a famine in the land. And there are those that are really hungry and there are those that are really thirsty for the word of God. And it's so sad to see that people are many times being misled because the word of God is being falsified and misrepresented to people out there. We are living in the day which the Bible says in Matthew 24, verse 24, that many false prophets shall arise and they shall deceive many people. And the Bible says they will do great signs and wonders if it was possible to deceive even the very elected. Now, the Bible speaks about the prophet by the name of Balaam. You can read about him in Numbers 22, 23, 24, where the Bible speaks about this prophet uh, that is called Balaam. And there was this king of Moab that summoned Balaam to come and curse the children of Israel. But Balaam could not curse what God had already blessed. And we see even in those chapters of the book of Numbers that Balaam was being represented as a prophet. <coughs> and we see even God speaking to him. But if you turn to Joshua chapter 13, the Bible refers to him as a soothsayer. And if you go into Revelation 2, Jesus says, Thus I have against you, that you have people that hold to the teaching of Balaam. Now God never rebuked the prophecy of Balaam, because what he prophesied was the truth. What he spoke in the name of the Lord was the truth. But his teaching was what God objected. And so it is with false prophets. They might give prophecies. They might do signs, wonders, and miracles. But are, they, are their teachings in line with what is already written? Are their teachings in agreement? God never condemned Balaam's prophecy, but God condemned the teaching of Balaam. And it's so important that we should have the correct teaching. We should have the teaching of the word of God. We should have the original teaching. You know, when Jesus was upon the earth, Jesus was preaching and teaching. And he even gave his disciples an instruction in Matthew chapter 28. He says in verse 19, go ye therefore teaching all nations. And we see in Acts, the book of Acts chapter 5, we see that they went from house to house preaching and teaching Jesus Christ teaching and preaching and when it comes to the teaching we need to make sure that it is the teaching of Jesus Christ hallelujah the teaching of Jesus Christ the true teaching from the Bible we must compare what is being teached regardless of who the teacher is because the Bible gives warning in 2nd Peter chapter 2 not just about uh, false prophets, but also about false teachers. And Peter says, just as there were false prophets among the people, so there will be false teachers among you. He was writing this to the believers, and he gave them a heads up. He gave them a warning. So a comparison is being made. Just as there was false prophets among the people of Israel, so there will be false teachers amongst the church of Jesus Christ that will bring in damnable heresies. Now we know the teachings of the Bible are contained in the Gospels of the Lord Jesus Christ and also in the Epistles of the Apostles. And anything that is contrary to this should be rejected. Because in Ephesians 2 verse 20, the Bible says that the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2 verse 41 verse 42, the Bible says that they remain steadfastly in the apostles' 
doctrine, hallelujah, in the apostles' doctrine. They remain steadfast in, that is how it was, and that is how it should be also now. We should abide with the teaching of the apostles. We should abide with the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul even wrote to the Thessalonians and he said, if there's any man that does not abide with the commandment or the tradition that you have received from us, the apostles, that you should mark such a man and you should have no fellowship with such a person. So it is so important, beloved, that we should abide with the teachings that was already given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible confirms in Acts chapter 2 that he gave instructions to the apostles through the Holy Spirit. So the apostles did not have their own teachings, but it was the teaching of the Lord. The Lord was teaching his people through the apostles. It was not their opinion, it was not their view, but it was God speaking through them to his people. They were the instruments that God used. They were the men, the vessels which God had ordained, and God spoke through them. And let us stick to what has already been spoken through them. Let us live by the word of God. Hallelujah. Now it's so important that we should live by the word of God. There is a difference between the world and the church. The world loves by their own standard, but the church loves by God's standard. The believer loves by the standard that God laid down in his word. And there is a difference, just as there is a difference between light and darkness, so there is a difference between believers and unbelievers. The believers are supposed to be the light of this world. The believers are supposed to be the salt of the earth. And it is so important that the church should be distinguished from the world. The believer should be different than the unbeliever. His walk should be different. His talk should be different. His way of living should be different because he loves by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And when it comes to loving, the believer loves according to God's principles and God's standards. And this is what makes the believer different from the unbeliever because the believer follows the instructions given in God's word but the unbeliever rejects the same instructions and it's so important as Christians that we love that we love according to the word of God you know if the spirit of somebody comes inside of you and takes a hold of you you will act like that person if we take, for instance, Beethoven, if the spirit of Beethoven came within you, you would act like Beethoven. You would compose music like Beethoven. If the spirit of Michael Jackson would go into you, you would sing like Michael Jackson. You would dance like Michael Jackson. If the spirit of a poet or a spirit of a musician or a spirit or of a builder or an engineer would go into you, you would act as that person. And when the Spirit of God goes within you, you will act like Christ. You will talk like Christ. You will behave like Christ. You will become Christ-like. And that is what a Christian is. A Christian is somebody that is Christ-like. Now, Christ means the anointed one because Jesus was anointed. According to Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me. Hallelujah. And we see in Luke chapter 4, Jesus reading that scripture and Jesus saying, this day the scripture is fulfilled. And we see the spirit that dwelt in Christ was the spirit of God. And if that spirit dwells in the believer, the believer becomes Christ-like. The believer becomes a Christian. And that is what a Christian is about. And Christianity is something that is to be lived. Hallelujah. Not just to be preached or to be spoken about, but Christianity is something that is to be lived. It is a life. A life that is worthy of God. A life that is Christ-like. That is what it is, it is all about. And to live a life that is Christ-like is to live according to the word of God. Hallelujah. To live according to the Holy Scriptures. So may the Lord bless you and be with you. I trust you enjoyed the short study and the word. Let us close our eyes, bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us this opportunity, this privilege that we can gather in your name and speak your word. And now we pray 
that your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish the mission and the purpose for which you send it. Lord, that it will touch those even in future generations that will listen to this. Lord, that their lives will be transformed and changed and that all glory and honor will go to you. I praise you, Lord. I worship you. You alone are worthy of all praise. You alone are worthy of all worship. And we pray, Lord, that you will just have your own way with us, that you will lead us, guide us, and instruct us. Give us strength, Lord, to serve you from day to day. Just feed our souls, even those that are hungry and thirsty out there. Hungry and thirsty for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Hungry and thirsty to learn more about you. We pray that you will touch them, Lord, and that you will satisfy their needs, and that you will touch their hearts and lives. Even those that are sick and afflicted, Lord, touch them, heal them, deliver them. Lord, we pray for broken marriages that you will restore. We pray, Lord, for those out there that are still lost, that you will save them. Those that are backslidden, that you will call them back. And just be merciful to all of us. We ask this in the matchless name of Jesus, our Lord, with thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you, beloved. My contact number is 078721 God bless you. Be with you till the next time. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. Christ, 
Yahweh Shiloh El Shaddai, hallowed be thy holy name. Jesu Christa, Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shiloh El Shaddai, hallowed be thy Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shiloh El Shaddai, hallowed be thy holy name. Hallowed be thy holy name. Hallowed be thy holy name. Hallowed be thy Yahweh Shiloh El Shaddai, hallowed be thy holy name. Hallowed be thy holy name. Hallowed be thy holy name. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ.